One of the amazing dimensions of film, as it was reflected in the novel, was stream of consciousness. Cinema, or moving images, when translated into prose, came, produced this uh, quite a wonderful effect, stream of consciousness. And the stream of consciousness writers discovered to their surprise that the reader could get far more em empathy, involvement in the mental processes of characters by disconnected, broken shots than they could by simple storyline interpretation. This uh, is still a mystery, that is the uh, relation of stream of consciousness to the developing movie technologies is also uh, an area that uh, is richly illustrated in symbolist poetry and I find it useful sometimes in teaching Mr. Elliot's poetry to point out how the proof rock world is very much a Charlie Chaplin sort of comedy and uh, with the shots. The shots are very much in the style of early silence and uh, with a sort of jazz effects Mr. Elliot is from St. Louis and uh, brought the blues to Britain, <laughs> to British poetry. There again, a very curious thing, speaking of light and shade and sound. The blues, as a form of involving, are famous. And if you have a, a bright, smart, cheerful, or any kind of melody completely tied in, it is a much less effective means of involving people than syncopation with its breaks and discontinuities which compel people to fill them in. The um, strange, uh, I suppose the word blues, uh, permits this direct encounter of forms, uh, like uh, syncopation itself. Instead of a nice smooth melodic line, you have these abrupt interruptions which permit far more involvement. The, um, the world of uh, Mozart is a very pictorial world in musical terms. That is, there's much light and shade in it and much foreground and background and perspective. Many of the spaces in Mozartian music are arranged just exactly like a Fragonard painting or a Boucher painting. You can have spaces, visual spaces, introduced into music. Auditory space is a very a fascinating type of space, quite different from visual space. And this ties in with this matter of storyline. Visual space is con continuous and connected. Anything that causes visual space to be upgraded in a culture will cause also respect for unity and continuity and connectedness. Anything that, this is true only of the visual sense. The um, other senses don't have this built-in characteristic of unity, uh, connectedness, uniformity, and so on. There is no uniformity or connectedness in hearing or in uh, touch, as Alec Layton put it, to the blind all things are sudden. Blind people don't have a sense of uniform continuous space. They live in a world of abrupt discontinuities and uh, insights. The ancient world had the blind man always as the very type of the seer, the sage, the insight man. Uh, because his uh, being deprived of the merely visual sense, he was in a position to pr plunge depth insights into situations. Well, the world of the stream of consciousness is, is very much in debt in the novel and in poetry to the movie form. And one thing that I would like to add to Tony's observations about the paper recorder, it has made us very conscious of sounds in our environment of which we are ordinarily unconscious. John Cage has a definition of silence in which he says, silence consists of all those sounds that are unintended. All the unintended sounds in the environment constitute silence. And it is the unintended sounds in the environment that the tape recorder and such instruments can now put right into the concert hall. 
This is why this happened with the photograph when it was new. The photograph brought images into the popular press, magazines, that ordin the, uh, images of things in the human environment of pe which people were completely unaware. The one thing that people do not see is their environment. They see the previous environment, not the actual one. Uh, this, uh, anyway, with the photograph, people began to notice the actual state of their cities, their yards, their homes, their houses, their clothing, the way they looked for the first time, say a century ago. And just as the tape recorder is brought into our environment, the sounds that are unintended brought into the concert hall. So the photograph brought into the world of direct attention and inspection a whole world of images that people ordinarily ignored. Now, one of the effects of the tape recorder, you can see, is to compel people to regard the sound environment as a work of art. Many electric tendencies in our environments today encourage people to begin to think about the possible programming of the human environment as if it were a work of art. Instead of worrying about what you put inside art galleries, taking a direct approach to the environment itself as a work of art. The Balinese have a saying, we have no art, we do everything as well as possible. They're quite aware of the fact that the Westerner regards art as a sometime thing that can be put into a special little space while the rest of the, the, rest of the environment can be just anything. However, to get back onto the, um, the movie has notice, noticeably become much more of an art form in popular and even uh, erudite estimation since TV. Since TV, movie of course is the, movie is the old environment, TV goes around it as new environment, movie goes up as art form. Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's really very noticeable that since TV, movie has become art form, old silence, old movies of any sort are now cherished and regarded with new awe and reverence. And this happened, this has happened over and over again in the human past. Every time a new form goes around an old form, the old form becomes an art form. It's like old uh, coach lamps, old buggies, old Model Ts, old anything. They all become art forms. It's like Williamsburg. The Williamsburg treatment of old environments as if they were works of art. Um, now that the planet has a new environment, a man-made environment of satellites and electric information, <clears throat> you can depend upon it that the planet is itself going to become an art form. <laughs> that old nose cone, that old spacecraft, our planet, our human habitat is going to be tidied up with vast expenditure of thought and energy as the place where it all began. <laughs> the old habitat to which one can return occasionally on a pilgrimage. <laughs> oh, there's strong evidence of this uh, as occurring already. 